Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Would you stand on your feet? Praise God at this time. Praise the Lord. Is he, is he good? No, I mean, is he real good? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is he real good? Real good. Real, real good is different than good. It's a, it's a whole different place about being real good. And it is really, it's in, important for us to realize, praise God, that we serve a God who's real good. Hallelujah. Who does real good things. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to Bishop Robinson and Lady Robinson, Pastor Matthews and Missionary Mel. We just praise God for this another day that the Lord has brought us through. We thank God for what he has done and what he's yet doing. We want to praise God, thank God for those who have joined with us in Facebook, on YouTube, those in the parking lot, and on the station 96.7. We thank God for them having come in to be with us this morning. Praise God, and we give God praise and glory for what he has done. We want to take some time as we begin to go into prayer just to worship him so can you just lift them hands and worship not not to me but to the God of your, our salvation too to the one who is our healer the one who's our deliverer the one who's strong and might hallelujah the one who's mighty in battle hallelujah the one who can never fail can you just worship him and just wave your hands in that praise in the atmosphere of God the one who is still healing and, and the one who's still delivering the one who's still opening doors and making ways and the one who's doing the impossible hallelujah oh God to him to that God hallelujah that's our strength hallelujah we bless his name and thank him hallelujah for he's good and his mercy endure forever bless the name of the Lord father God we thank you this morning we are in so God, amazement, hallelujah, and how wonderful you are. God, we thank you that in spite of the times that we're in and, and the things that are going on, you remain God, solid, hallelujah, high and lifted up, oh God. Father, we thank you for strengthening the weak today, God. Thank you for lifting up hung down heads, God. Thank you for strengthening feeble knees in the name of Jesus. We praise you today, God, for they are those hallelujah that are looking up for a savior God and you're there hallelujah loving God uh, delivering making ways and opening doors God uh, and we thank you for it uh, father we ask that you will bless the service today uh, even as uh, we find ourselves in your presence uh, giving you praise giving you glory and giving you honor God we pray for brother base today uh, that you will strengthen his body God uh, that you'll move in his life in the name of Jesus. We pray for Lauren today, God, that you will move, God, and her, God, that you will do, God, what needs to be done. And Father, we'll give you glory, we'll give you praise, and we'll give you honor for it in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. And amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 He is worthy to be praised. And he is worthy to be adored. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our Father, you are holy. We give you glory and we bless your name. Our Father, you are holy. Yeah. 
in our lives. Somebody say amen. Thank you, praise team. Thank God, thank God. Thank God. Give me some more monitors, please, Mike. Thank you, sir. Amen. I praise God for what he has done and what he's doing in all of our lives. To God be the glory for the things he has, he has done. Grateful, grateful. That's the song they sing, Angie. That song they sing, grateful for the things he has done. And he keeps doing great things for us. Amen. Thank God for your presence in the sanctuary. Thank you for those who are watching via Zoom, Facebook Live, those who may be in the parking lot. Amen. Thank you so very much. Amen. To being a part of the services this blessed morning. Amen. On this, the third uh, Sunday in the month of January, in the year 2022. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Well, we're excited about this week because this week is our consecrational week. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. On this upcoming Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday, we will be amen praying. We'll be fasting on these particular three days this week. And we made it real easy for you. Amen. We're going to be praying and fasting until 12 noon. I mean, you can do that with your eyes closed. Some of you may be doing that too. <laughs> amen. But in any case, until 12 noon, amen, from food, amen, and from television. Come on, you know, social media, unless you have to use social media, you know that is the case of your job. But we're going to ask God to just move in the midst, in our midst, in our individual lives, but certainly corporately in the church of the living God. So please keep that in mind on this Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of this week, amen. In addition to that, Amen. We're going to be having commencing, yes, commencing later on today, starting today, amen, for the entire week, amen. We're going to ask that certainly we're, we're, we're filling our prayer request cards out, amen. I want you to get a card, amen, get five of them, get ten of them, as many as you need, and fill it out, amen, because for this week in our weekly, uh, this week we'll be praying and we're going before the Lord we we're asking the, the intercessors to intercede on these requests, amen, this particular week. So you can do it by the card. You can do it by telephone. You can call 465, amen, 7729, and you can leave your prayer request on the telephone, amen. They will take it off the phone, put it on the card, amen, and the intercessors will be praying. That's Anytime you want to call, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 3 o'clock in the morning, call. You can leave that prayer request on the telephone. Amen. And by next week, we're going to have you can do it by uh, uh, internet. You can do it by internet. Amen. By, by next Sunday. So, and the email address. So, just get ready. Amen. If you have a prayer request, don't keep it to yourself. Amen. Let the, let the prayer warriors pray with in regards to that prayer request. Is that all right? Amen. So certainly keep that in mind. And finally, in regards to that, we're going to ask that you would also keep in mind that we ask that you this week, this week, one person a day, one person a day, uh, if you would pray with one person a day, whether it be in person or whether it be on telephone. All right. Now, if the person does not answer the telephone, if the voicemail, that don't count. You can still pray, but it don't count. All right. We want you to pray with a Real live humanoid, Elder Matthews. Real live humanoid person. One person a day, at least one person a day. Can you do that? Amen. I, I want those who can really stand at the gap. 
amen, to let the Lord lead you, amen, that capacity. One person a day, amen, whether it be in this church or outside this church, be family, just to make a difference, amen, amen. Prayer is certainly the order of the day. So please keep that in mind as we're going through the consecration period this week as well. Amen? Amen. Great. Come on back, praise team, and we're going to magnify the Lord. Amen. This blessed day for what God has done into our lives. Thank God. We'll continue to pray for the Bethune family. Amen. The passing of Sister Gail. Her services will be this upcoming Saturday here at the Sanctuary. Uh, 10 o'clock viewing and 11 a.m. will be the services. Amen. Keep that family in prayer. Amen. As they go forth during this time period of bereavement. Praise team again.
receive your miracle. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and expect it. Hallelujah. Come on and expect your miracle. Come on and claim your miracle. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's who he is, way maker, promise keeper, miracle worker, light in the darkness. That's who you are. Hallelujah. He is, somebody say way maker. He is indeed a way maker. He's a miracle worker. Amen. Oh, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. We're able to go forth. Because he is a God of his word. Amen. Amen. You can depend upon the word of the Lord. Amen. He is certainly a promise keeper. He shows himself to be faithful in all of our lives. Amen. Thank you again. Amen. Praise team. Amen. Thank you so very, very much. Amen. Again, for those who may need some, we have some KN95 masks that you can uh, receive. And as you leave the sanctuary, just pick them up. Amen. Use them appropriately. Amen. As you go along uh, during the course of the week, uh, etc. Amen. Additionally, we can feel, I understand Brother JJ was in the hospital. He's now home. Amen. Thank God for that. Amen. Thank God. Amen. And Sister uh, Marita Peel is in the hospital. Keep her in prayer also at uh, Cape Regional. Amen. On this last, on the fifth Sunday of this month in two weeks, Amen. We're going to ask you to bring your oil in, your uh, anointing oil. We're going to be anointing the oil, consecrating the oil. Amen. That will be on the fifth Sunday of this particular month of January as we go forth in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would turn to the Old Testament book of the Bible, the book of 1 Samuel. The book of 1 Samuel, and it is chapter... Chapter number 7, 1 Samuel, chapter number 7. I said the same thing. I heard, uh-oh, I, I hear you. Uh-oh. I think it's the old part they did, so that really helped us out. Amen. <laughs> and the Lord shall rain down fire from heaven. Uh-oh. All right. <laughs> Amen. 1 Samuel, chapter number 7, and uh, verse number 3. And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If you do return, if you return unto the Lord with all of your hearts, then put away the strange gods of the Astaroth from among you, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord, and serve him only. He will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Asherah and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Israel, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And they gathered together, Mizpah. 
and brought, drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted that day. And said there, we have sinned against the Lord and Samuel judged the children of Israel in the city. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together in this for the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel and when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said unto Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. And the Lord heard him. And the Lord heard him. One more uh, passage of scripture in First Samuel and nineteen. Uh, a verse of the 12th chapter, 12, 19. And Samuel replied, and people said unto Samuel, verse number 19, pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God that we die not. For we have added unto all of our sins this evil to ask us a king. And Samuel's reply initially is following, but verse 23 in particular says, Samuel says, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. Can the church say amen? Consider how great things or how awesome God has moved in your life, is what Samuel, paraphrasing, said. Don't stop praying. Don't, don't stop praying. As we are entering in this a week of prayer and consecration, church consecration, I am convinced that it is the, not only the right time to pray, but prayer is of the essences, or essential right very now. It's the right time to pray. Our praying is not based upon the fact of what you are presently going through, what we are nationally going through, what we are globally going through. And that has some validity to that point. But I believe whether it's personal national or global, the happenings that are occurring are do occur, but prayer is the order of the day. It seems to me, and it seems to you as well, that 
there is a tendency for us to pray more when there are circumstances and happenings occurring. That's true, y'all. That, that is absolutely true. But I'm also convinced that praying at and when circumstances occur are not the only time we ought to pray. Or when the situations exist. I believe that God has given us a mandate to pray. Somebody say pray. When I was in Oklahoma many decades ago, going to First Deliverance Church in Oklahoma City, the Honorable Bishop uh, Daniel C. Little was the pastor at that time period. And uh, when we would come to the sanctuary, to the church, they had an expression. And the expression was, what time is it? And the response was, prayer time at First Deliverance. And he said again, what time is it? They said, prayer time at first deliverance. And he said again, what time is it? He said, prayer time at first deliverance. And Bishop Little said, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. It's prayer time at first deliverance. Brothers and sisters, it is prayer time, not just at Christ's gospel. It's not just prayer time just for our state. It's not just prayer time for our nation, nor is it just prayer time globally. It's prayer time all over for everybody. It is indeed time for us, time for you, time for preachers, time for uh, ministers, time for whoever you may be. It is time for you and I to pray. It is Bishop uh, Clifton Jones in the manual the, that he wrote in 21, tw correction, 23 lessons in regards to his prayer clinic manual. And the very first lesson and the second lesson, he makes it quite clear the importance of he makes it so clear that not only he makes his statement, he simply says that in lesson two, he says, it's, we have to learn, lesson one rather says, we have to learn how to pray. Sounds strange, learn, learn how to pray. Uh, and then I realized what he was saying was in actuality, there are many people when they, I see little people, little people don't grow up learning to tie the shoe. Some, some of them took, some of us took a long time tying your shoe. I mean, in second grade and third grade and sixth, I mean, you know, they learned, they finally got it because someone had to teach them how to tie their shoe. We have been taught many things in life, and I propose to you that we have to be taught how to pray. He says in lesson number two of his manual, he says you have to uh, receive a time period to pray. That's very interesting. He says have a set time to be able to to pray. Many of you, I've, I've heard in the morning, 6 o'clock, you're on the uh, 6 a.m. prayer line, and the numbers value, and they fluctuate, but there is a time period that you pray. Some pray before 6 a.m., and then some pray after that, and some pray at 12 o'clock, whatever you do, but there has to be a time period for your prayer. And what makes prayer so important to me is the fact that, that there is a connection I have with God. That, that, that's what it really is, is. There is a connection. Somebody say connection. I, uh, a connective connection I have with God. I have a connection with God. That's that's important to me because when I have a connection with God, it allows me to come into a relationship. 
It's more than just asking what I want. And I, I go beyond that. That connection says, God, here we are again, you and I, and I'm grateful to be able to talk to you. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I'm able to talk to the Lord. I'm glad that I am able and have the privilege to talk to the Lord, not just only in the sanctuary, but also at home, on my job, or whether you're in the car, or whether you're in the hospital, you can talk to the Lord. And it is in the text where Samuel, uh, his, his, his mother, Hannah, had prayed for a child. And the Bible says, she went to the sanctuary, went to the temple and prayed, and finally uh, uh, the prophet or the high priest heard her and saw her, and he said to her, finally, you will get that request you wanted. And that request, Samuel, become, Samuel is born, and he grows up in the church, so to speak, and he works and waits on Eli in the sanctuary, and Samuel becomes now, he becomes the judge over Israel. And one thing about Samuel, Samuel was not a perfect man, but Samuel had a connection with God. And in his connection, he judged Israel for 40 years. And as he judged Israel, the Bible says Israel at times had gotten beside themselves like us. We start doing our own thing and we want the Lord to intervene. Can I get a witness? How many times have you done your own thing and want the Lord to intervene on your behalf? Don't, don't raise your hand. Hey, man, I know I've done that myself. Lord, help me and help me real quickly, Lord, please. Bible says Samuel in this text he speaks to Israel and lets Israel know Israel you've messed up but if you were to turn from following the gods uh, 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 of the heathens and turn to God God will do a supernatural marvelous work in your life and he will minister unto you and the Bible says he, in verse Samuel chapter number 7, and as he says, and serve only him. He says, he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistine. It is in verse number 4, the Bible says, then the children of Israel did put away Balaam, did put away Ashroth, and serve the Lord only. They put away the gods of the heathens, and, and they serve the Lord only. And the Bible says in, in later on that the Philistines come against them. And as they come against them, uh, they become fearful. And they come to Samuel and says to Samuel, he says to, he says to them, cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us. Oh, brothers and sisters, there's something very marvelous when we can cry out unto the Lord for somebody else. It's something marvelous when we can really go before the Lord on someone else's behalf and say, Lord, intercede, I pray, for my brother and for my sister and not just verbalize it, but from your very, very heart, not just going through uh, uh, vain repetitions, but saying, Lord, I petition, I petition you, Lord, please, I beg you, Lord, look down upon my brother and my sister. It is not unusual for having individuals pray for you. It is not unusual for us to pray for somebody else. I already know this week there have been individuals who have been praying for me, and I say thank you. I say thank you. And I tell you, don't stop praying for me. And I, I tell you, thank you. Don't stop praying for me because I, Edgar Darnell Robinson Jr., I need your prayer. 
I wonder this morning how many others in the sanctuary desire for somebody to pray for them. I wonder how many, can I get a witness this morning? Is there anybody else who really wants somebody to pray for them? If you're here, somebody say, me! If you want someone to pray for you, somebody say, me! Oh, 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 God, oh, God, oh, God. I may not know your situation, and I may not know your dilemma, nor may I know why you got into what you got into, but if you want someone to pray for you, shout me, Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Prayer is the order of the day. Prayer is the order of the day. And they asked Samuel, the judge, they asked Samuel, Samuel, will you please pray for us? Samuel, will you please cry out for us? Samuel, will you please intervene on our behalf? Samuel, will you please, will you please, will you please, will you please pray? Brothers and sisters, I want to admonish you this morning, don't stop praying. I don't care how bad it may look, don't stop praying. I don't care how wayward they may go, don't stop praying. I don't care how much is beyond your control, don't stop praying. Because... Because we have that connection, because we are connected, what does the writer say in the New Testament? He says, pray without ceasing. What does the writer say in the New Testament that men ought to always pray? Tell somebody pray. Pray and not faint. What does the writer say in the New Testament that the Spirit make of intercession for us uh, through our groanings and our moanings? Uh, the Spirit of God make of intercession for us. Uh, the Spirit of God. We don't know how we should pray as we ought. But thank God for that connection. Thank God for that connection. Thank God for that connection. Tell somebody I'm praying for you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, yes, that's right. Oh, yes, that's right. Those on Zoom, those in Facebook, let it be known and declared today that we are praying for you. I'm so grateful that I belong to a praying church. I'm so grateful that I belong to a believing church who believes in the power of prayer, who believes in the God who we're praying to, who believes that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask to think according to the power that worketh in us. Now, before you shout your way to heaven. I want you to understand that in the book of Daniel, the Bible says Daniel prayed three times a day, opened the windows, faced Jerusalem, and prayed. Well, because Daniel prayed that way, Daniel found himself in trouble. And prayer got Daniel thrown into the lion's den. But the thing that's so intriguing about it is, the writer doesn't say Daniel prayed when he was in the lion's den. 
Now, Paul and Silas, they prayed and, and sang praises of the Lord when they were in prison. It doesn't say Paul, and it doesn't say that Daniel prayed while he was in the lion's den. Check it out, check it out, check it out. Oh, no! Something about the fact of a confidence that we have in our God that lets me understand, though I may pray before, though I may pray in the middle, or even pray in the back, it makes no difference as long as I've got that connection with God. As long, do you have to ask yourself a question, do I have a connection? Do you realize how we feel, correction, how I feel when I'm at home watching TV. And when I had another service, the TV would go on to blink because of the weather. And I got disturbed. But then I changed over to another service. And this service seems to be okay in the midst of weather. You sometimes get messed up, and we think our connection is messed up. And so you have to examine your cable. You have to examine your connection to make sure it is correct. I'm not saying you may not get flabbergasted or get a little initially but don't you worry, brothers and sisters, check the connection. And when you got a connection with the Lord, when you really have a connection with the Lord, hey, he comes back. He comes back. He was never disconnected. Sometimes it's us who have the issue. And so I'm sharing with you, like Samuel told Israel, he told them this profound word. He said, I would sin if I stop praying for you. He says, I would sin. To those who are watching Facebook and those who are watching Zoom and those who may be in the parking lot, don't get it twisted. Pastor is praying for you. I'm, I'm going to go a step further. I'm praying for you when you're not here. I'm, I'm praying for you if I haven't seen you in two years. I'm still praying for you if you choose to be home. I'm not knocking that, but I'm still praying for you because that's my assignment. That's what the Lord has given to me. He has told me, don't you dare stop praying. Keep on praying. Pray. The power, the potency of prayer goes up and down the aisles, up and down the rows. The power and the potency of prayer is absolutely life changing. My brothers and my sisters, we, I pray not only when you're sick. But I pray, how many folk in here are well? W-E-L-L, -L, well, are they well? The well folk, stand up. Well, stand up. Be well, I'm believing. Stand up, well folk, well folk. Where are the well folk at? Look at the world. We've got more well folk than sick folk. But what I do, brothers and sisters, I pray for the well folk. I pray for the well folk. Yes, hip operation, hip replacement, but I pray for the well folk. Yes, I'm feeling good, but I pray for the well folk because the Bible says a strong. Or to bear the infirmities of the weak. You may be seated. Thank you. What am I saying? We are in this together. And what makes me so uh, excited and glad and grateful is the fact that I have what I call a heavenly connection. I have to admit, if I didn't have the Lord on the inside of me, I would be a messed up somebody. Can I get a witness? Tell somebody, won't he do it? 
Ha! I feel, I feel like preaching. Won't he, won't he do it? Can I get a witness? If you know he'll do it, just raise your hand and say hallelujah. I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm so grateful I got the Holy Ghost down in my soul. Just like the Bible says. Just like the Bible says. The truth of the matter is, what would our life be without Christ? What would it be? We are miserable, messed up individuals. The songwriter makes it quite clear. We will be sinking deep in sin. What the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. Minister Al, I call him the ologist. Brother Johnson is also, he's a hymn man. He's got a whole repertory of hymns. Ready to, ready to sing even right now. Amen. But what they are, it's not the melody of the, of the hymn. It's the words that are in there. It's the words that are biblically based that allow us to go forward. Sisters and brothers, would you just, and you can stop after one week if you so desire. Would you just this week, would you make up in your mind this week that I'm going to be praying with one person, at least one person every day. Let the Lord lead you. That person needs you to pray for them and with them. And the Lord will direct you. You'll find out. You'll find out in your praying what the Lord will do. I believe you're connected. I believe we're connected. And I say to you very openly, very openly, one must be born again of the water and of the spirit. And of the spirit. Did you know that you could be saved today? Jesus is the way. Turn your life to him and live. No matter what you've done, what you are doing, turn your life to him and live. He will save your soul. He will make you whole, put you on a brand new road. Turn your life to him and live. As Pastor Matthews comes and gives the altar call and sings that song, brothers and sisters, you can be saved today. What you've done, Jesus is the one. Turn your life to Him and live. He can save your soul. Do you believe it? You can cleanse and make you whole. to him and live no matter what you've done Jesus he's the one look to Jesus Christ my savior and live he can save your soul he can cleanse 
and make you whole. But what do you have to do? Turn your life to him. Turn your life to him. Turn your life to him and live. Look to Jesus. His word, hallelujah. Only that you look and live. He can save your soul. He can cleanse and make you whole. Is there one this morning that you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins? Bishop has preached the word this morning. Give God a hand of praise for the word. For the word. Clap your hands for the word. And maybe the word of God touched your heart. Maybe the word of God touched your heart heart as you were listening over the airways, as you were watching by Zoom, sitting in the parking lot. Maybe you need to call the church and say, I need prayer this morning. If you're watching by Zoom, I believe our moderator will put that on the screen, the number you can call and you can get prayer today. You can get prayer today but not only that you can be saved today is there one this morning who says I need the Lord I want to turn my life around I want to give my life to Jesus I want to commit to him today is there one this morning he can save your soul he can save your soul Turn your life to him, oh my, my, and live. Maybe somebody just needs prayer this morning. You know the Lord, you've been born of the water, you've been born of the Spirit, but maybe you just need prayer. Are you here this morning? If you walk and you just wave your hand, I just need, I just need prayer. My hands waving all over the audience, all over the congregants. Maybe you need a special touch. Bishop, are we sending them to the classroom? Or yes, 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 yes. If you are the one who needs that special prayer, you want someone to minister to you and with you and for you, we're going to ask you this morning to walk towards the small classroom through these doors. Someone will meet you this morning. Someone will minister with you. Someone will intercede with you this morning. Because prayer is the order of the day. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous does what? It availeth much. You can save your soul, cleanse and make you whole, turn your life to him, oh my, and live. God bless you. How many of you heard the word of the Lord this morning?
Hallelujah. 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 The opportunity again, if you want to be prayed with, is to go right out those doors. Praise the Lord. And the ministry will meet you there and pray with you. Praise God. At this time, we're preparing ourselves to receive our offering. Praise the Lord. We ask, praise God, if you need an envelope, if you'll just lift your hands as the ushers are coming up the aisles to give you an envelope at this time. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. We ask if you'll rise and jump on your feet and get your offering, get your envelope in your hand. We'll give you a moment, praise God, to, to write it out or to uh, put the information on. Praise the Lord at this time. Praise God. Again, we ask if you'll rise up on your feet. Praise the Lord. Stop. 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 Thank you. Stop. Stay right where you are. Lift your offering up. Father God, we praise you this morning. We thank you for opening doors and making ways. Father, we thank you not just for the material things, but we thank you for life today, God. We thank you for the word of God that have come forth with such power and anointing. Father, we ask you to bless those that have to give, those who don't have to give. Father, we ask you to do a miraculous work. God, multiply. Hallelujah, that it may be used for the building of your kingdom. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so very much for your liberality and giving, amen, this morning in the sanctuary in the kingdom of God. Lord bless you and keep you. Certainly is our prayer as we go forward. Please do not forget, amen, you and I, we are praying this week. We're fasting on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at 12 noon. Those who have medicine, please take your medicine appropriately so.